Well, he joins us now live. A very warm welcome to the program, to Ian. G'day, Fozzie. How are you, mate? Afternoon, Marty. Good, thank you. You've had a nice week off, huh? Yeah, well, it's uh, it's a little bit unusual. You know, we used to traditionally have the third birds low in this window, but now we haven't, so it's a chance for everyone to, I guess, get, go home and, and breathe a little bit before we name a new squad on Sunday and get into it again at a camp next week. Looking forward to that. Did New Zealand Rugby congratulate you on winning those two trophies? Did you get a memo from the CEO? Oh, New Zealand Rugby were delighted, as were we. You know, it was a, it was a goal of ours, and... Let's face it, it looked a little bit unlikely in the early stages, but, you know, really delighted with the second half of the championship, the way we come home, and, um, you know, to get a hand, our hands on those two trophies along with the Freedom Cup are all very important to us. So, you know, I know that the broader New Zealand rugby community is also excited about that. Performance review, and we're doing this last week uh, and on the show, and I'm sure everyone else does, looking back to see a uh, five win and four losses. I gave the team a B minus, and I thought that, you know, and and several others have given it a bit less than that. I was really interested to know, you know, if you put a grade on, where do you think you're at right now? Yeah, well, it's a tough one to grade, isn't it? Because there's some performances, you know, I think in the last four, five to six games, you'd, you'd probably give us a a B plus, A minus for a couple of those games, and, and you'd probably give us a, a C minus for a couple as well. So, you know, that's and that's been the story of of the year. We, you know, we, we've beat teams and then we've lost to teams. And so it's, uh, but, you know, so I, I think your mark you've given us is probably fair. We, you know, we, we've always judged ourselves. We want everything to be an A. And, but, you know, we also know that we're coming off some pretty unique times in New Zealand rugby with, with you know, the with what's happened in this country the last two or three years and isolation and how we've gone about our rugby and the international windows we've had. The whole development program for this World Cup cycle has been chucked out the window. And, you know, so what we've seen this year is we put a lot of pressure on... Um, some, I guess, have our more established players early in this campaign, and we had some really tough opposition with Ireland and South Africa, and and and, and we've sort of kind of made some decisions and bought a few new younger players and a few key positions, and I see that I think we're making a big difference there. So, so forward looking, pretty excited. Ian Foster with us on the platform. After we lost in Nelspruit, which was just, it felt such a depressing loss, and you said after that that you thought there had been progress. You thought when Jason and Ryan came in that you saw things were different and they were improving, and we turned it around and we won uh, in, in, in Joburg. Since then, we had the Argentina loss. That's the only loss since then. You, 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 you maintained that, though, and kept your confidence through that. How difficult was that, and how much self-belief did you have and had to have in your team? Because at that stage, it was just all up against you, it felt. Yeah, look, it, it's um, it, it's tough when you're dealing with 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 losses, and and I think you know this. <clears throat> I guess this country is uh, very proud about its rugby heritage, and we know that, and we use that, and and so when we lose, we you know we we know that there's going to be an uproar against us, and and that's all part of it. That's, <laughs> can only do what we can do with inside our camp and make sure that we're having honest conversations and and really dealing with the real issues about how we can improve. And so they were going on as long as they were happening at the the the, the degree of honesty that I knew we needed, then then I, I, I actually maintained full belief through that period. But but it hurt Martin, like there's no doubt that it was a, a pretty vicious sort of time period and Everyone was questioning a whole lot of things, and including me, and, mm. and I get that and, under, un, and understand that. But it doesn't change who I think I am and, and, and the role that I do with this group and the belief I've got in it. And um, and you, we've been able to come out the other side a little bit. And you know, it's not about proving people wrong; it's about showing people that we are a team that lost. We were disappointed. We are we are growing. We've made some changes. We've brought some new people in the front office and we've also brought a, a few younger players in and and I really believe we're positioning ourselves very, very strongly in the next 12 months. 
Ian, you've behaved with such dignity throughout this. There must be times there where just you'd love to turn around and say to people, really, I suppose, what you think. What? And I know you're not able to do that. Or am I wrong here? Does it not affect you that much? Are you able to <laughs> let that stuff slide and go, OK, I've got bigger th- fish to fry here? Uh, well, the answer's a little bit of both, I reckon. I think that, you know, it's... Uh, it, look, it's... I'm like asking on the human advice. level, you know, that's the thing. I'm asking on yeah. the human ear, mate. Yeah, well, I think all us coaches believe that, that we're bulletproof and, and we can deal with all the criticism and the, and the, out, and the outcry. And, and, um, but, you know, it doesn't matter how... I got some great advice from a, a high-profile person in another sport who said it doesn't matter how tough your armour is, every so often the bullets get through. So it's not a world that you want to live in when... When uh, you know, so you want to move on from that situation pretty quickly. We have been criticised all the time, but that does it really affect who I am? No, it doesn't. Um, does it affect how I react with the team? No, because you know my my job is to is to lead this group and to create an organisation and an environment that that we thrive in. And and when you're going through periods of change, sometimes that's hard, and particularly. This year was always going to be niggly because we had outstanding opposition early. Straight, we were straight into a three-test series against a really good Irish team. We we had controversies with cards that obviously our player so we had not been allowed back on the park. And in the second test, was a whole lot of things were happening that we didn't really get a bounce of the ball, and and, and we deserved to lose. I've got to take that on the chin, but um, it doesn't turn us into a bad team overnight, and it was our job to prove that. Personally, how did it, how do you manage this the stress of all of that? Do you go? Do you need outside help? Do you just need to be around the people that are close? You don't have to answer this question, of course, if you don't want to. But I mean, you know, it's 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 unbelievable to think that when you have that much heaped on you, the pile on comes on like it does. That it doesn't stress you out. How do you handle that? Ah, uh, yeah. You stick to the truths. That's the main thing. And just because there's a lot of noise um, and a lot of opinions doesn't make it right. It just means there's lots of noise and lots of opinions. And so you've just got to make sure that you're you're dealing in truths. And so I'm making sure that, you know, I'm testing what I'm doing with my group, um, that I'm being challenged in the right space, and and that once we get certainty and agreement on that, then it's okay. Well, here's our plan. Let's get stuck in. And in the meantime, man, it, it's going to hurt a little bit. So you just got to you got to approach it like that, Marty. And um, and really, it's uh, you know I, I don't think anyone should be defined by what other people say. You know, you can listen, but it doesn't it doesn't make it right. Okay, well, I've got one more question on this and a whole lot of rugby questions, so just please sort of bear with me one day. Just, <laughs> just when you get home and stuff like that, though, I know that Mrs F must know, your friends and your family, your daughters must know, and that, and they just must be dying inside for you because of what, you know, you because what you personally have to wear and bear. Can you be normal when you get home? I mean, can you actually just, like, we're not talking about rugby, we're not talking about that, because I know it affects everyone around you, probably more in a lot of ways, Ian, because they don't, they don't know how to deal with it, almost, if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, I think they know how to deal with it, but they they hurt, and there's no doubt the um, that that your extended family uh, are, are the ones that get hurt the most with the with the criticism. No doubt about that at all. And and so they've just got to, you know, the key thing there is is you just got to keep connecting with your family and let them know that 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 you're real, that you you're okay. And that what what we're going through is is something that that that, that I guess I can I can put up with. So that's that's how you deal with that from a family side. But it is tough, and it's fair to say, like it's you end up losing. A, you know, I think the media in general end up losing a lot of, a lot of readers and subscribers because after a while, people are just I get it. Well, people that I get it. They, they, they just say, well, I just can't keep listening to this stuff. It's just. And you can't change it, so you just you learn how to switch off from it. Notice that there's several of the turncoat media seem to have shelved the hangman's noose, and they're all over you like you know a cheap suit at the moment. Anyway, let's move on from this. I want to ask you so many all black questions. All right, injury updates, please. But for... but, but, but but Marty, I'll just, I'll just talk about that. Go on. 
you, you, you have a moment of respite. But those same people, that, they've still got it. They've just put it from their front pocket to their back pocket. And so it'll come out on another day. And so the minute that you think you've sorted all that out is when you when you get lulled into a false sense as a coach, particularly of this team. And so, yeah, look, look the job's not, this is not a popularity contest. No. And, 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 I, and I, I'd love to be popular and I'd love, love that, but it's actually not my job. My job is to coach this team and, and, and I believe I'm doing a pretty good job at it. Ian, do you get bitter about it though? Does it, does it, does it, does it kind of, does those kind of feelings sort of, if you, you find yourself sitting there at times thinking, oh, you know, as I say, you want to call people the names, you want to call them and stuff? No, but I, what it does do is it, it certainly has made me uh, a lot more battle hardened. I think I'd use that word rather than bitter. Okay. And it's, um, it says, okay, well, that's the, that's the way the game's played. So, you know, so it's made me, just a little bit more hardened in my outlook and, and in some ways that's probably a good thing for me. Ian Foster is with us, All Black Coach. Right, injury update please on Goodhue and ALB for a start. <clears throat> uh, Jack's, Jack's long term. Um, Jack will be um, Jack will be a bit like Quinn, come back early. Oh, he come back a little bit earlier than Quinn but he'll be early next year for Super Rugby. Um, Anton is trending well and could even play 30 minutes this weekend for Waikato in the quarterfinal. Wow. Wow. There you go. Wow. Okay, that's a piece of news. We didn't know that. Um, Roger Tuvasar Shek, and I'm sure that you would have reacted with amusement, but I, I certainly did, and I hope you did, when um, the reports came out this week that the All Black coach had told the Auckland coaching staff to play him on the wing this weekend. Do you have that much influence are you, you know, do you talk to the other coaches about this kind of stuff? And, and were you happy seeing Roger on the weekend? On the, sorry, on the wing? Well, like, like normal, you've asked me about five questions in one, but that's your style. <laughs> I love you for it. So I'll start with the first one. Is, do I talk to them? Yes, I do. Uh, got a great relationship with Lama. He's always really keen to know how they can help and help develop their players. And so, you know, he's been outstanding in that space. So we had a conversation about... Um, you know, if he had an opportunity to, at the end of a game, to slip him in for a few minutes on the wing, just to, just to give him a bit of a different view of the game from a, a versatility and understanding the game more from a different angle. Um, but did I ask him to play to start him on the wing? No, I didn't. That's that's their call. And but I was really interested because I think uh, it'll be good for Roger to have a couple of different experiences. I think he'll. He's a very smart uh, man. He desperate to learn and and maybe just playing in a different position for getting some minutes in a in a wing position. We'll just give him a different perspective of the game, and I think he'll grow through that. So I'm actually pretty pleased with it. He's going to be in the squad. We know that. I know that you can't tell me that he's going to be in the squad. We expect him to play. If he was in the squad, would you be picking him to play one of the test matches on the tour? <laughs> oh, look, I won't go into that, Marty. Look, at the end of the day, it's. You know, we've got a, a bit of a plan in place, but, you know, for us, uh, you know, last year was the first year up north for four years, so these moments really up north, and so we'll be making those decisions weekly based on what what players and what experiences this team needs to get together out of this Northern Hemisphere tour to put in its best best possible position going into a World Cup. So um, there'll be no guarantees about players playing all the time, but certainly we do want to expose players to different conditions. So it'll be, there, there will be a plan around that. Ian, is there anyone playing NPC who's not in the All Black squad or wasn't in the All Black squad that you've seen throughout any of the NPC that you think could make the team? And is that still a pathway? We used to call them bolters back in the day, didn't we? <clears throat> Yeah, we did, and um, and the answer is it's the, the door is still open, and and I think this year, you know, like I think on Sunday we named the All Blacks, and you know traditionally there's not a lot of change from the Rugby Championship to the Northern Hemisphere Tour um, in selection, but this year we've on Monday we we actually named the All Blacks 15 team, which is another squad of 27, so that's 28 players. 
and effectively a B team going up to play Island Day and Barbarians. And so, you know, that's that's been a, a hard team to select, to be honest, because, you know, when you go down into 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 your next level, there's a, there's a number of players playing really well right now at MPC who are definitely putting their hand up for that that All Blacks 15 team. And... But we're not just picking it from NPC form. We're also picking it from how well they've played at super level as well because we know super level has given us a good indicator of their readiness for the international game. So we're, we are studying the NPC hard alongside with the information we gathered already at Super Rugby. So it's probably that combination of championships that's the key for young players coming through. OK, so that's a development side as, as, as much as a B side, is it? Because you've got to still have that experience, don't you? Yeah, well, it's, I'd like you to think of it more as a as a B side because if you look at the cycle of the World Cup, it's only you know eleven months out from the from the World Cup in France. So this is a chance for us to you know really look at some guys that could be next in line or could be pushing for a World Cup spot. So you know for us, whereas if you had this tour like in year one of a World Cup cycle, then you might tend to make it a lot more of a development type selection. So so this year it's going to be, in our opinion, going to be a very strong team. Ian Foster, all-back coach with us. I've got about four or five minutes more, if that's OK with you. OK, um, the, the loose forward trio, it felt like just as when you're just getting the, the combination that you wanted, then we have injuries again. Um, how close are you to getting what you believe is your number one loose forward trio? Or is that, here I am asking another five questions, or is that going to be a fluid situation <laughs> again, depending on the opponents and everything else? Yeah, look, it's going to be, I think the answer is both, because, you know, like like last year, Marty, we, we were away for three and a half months, played 10 tests in 12 weeks, and we had a squad of 40. So we, we had to rotate just for the, the whole mental health of that that particular group um, being away from home for that period. And so we use that as a, a real strong depth type focus for the year. This year, I stated right at the start that we were going to use this year to develop some combinations. And, you know, and and so you'll get, we'll, we'll get criticised for not playing enough people or not playing X, Y, Z and maybe building our depth. But we've done a lot of that last year. So this year really was about building combinations. And and sometimes you can't do that all the time because you have injuries. But but what we have learned is we've learned that Scott Barrett is an outstanding lock and he's also an outstanding six for us. And, and I think one of the big movers for us has been Shannon Frizzell. You know, he had a, a long period off with injury, but he came back and I thought he brought a a real physical edge to the group when he came back in. So, you know, so whilst we're still playing around with what is the ultimate combination, we are pretty excited about the the, the players who have taken their opportunities and have given us some really good options going forward. Is that is can it, is it the same kind of question and answer then around the the back three and I'm talking about Will and, and Geordie now Geordie playing at 12 and that are you more more happier that that you have players that can actually slot into other positions because we know during the World Cup that happens you've got to use your bench and stuff like that so are you looking at it more like that as opposed to oh Geordie's definitely going to be a 12 now or Will Jordan's definitely on the wing or he's going to be at fullback or again is that just a fluid thing well, it is a fluid thing at all, but I mean, th- th- what a great problem we've got. I mean, we went into this year, the first five tests were against teams that we knew would play a, a, a really high kicking game, a lot of kicking pressure. So we went in there with with Will Jordan, Geordie Barrett, and and we had several. We ch- it was going to be Caleb, but we're, we're now developing a really good back three, and I'll put Bodie in that category too, who are dealing well with that high ball and that kicking part of the game. And again, I want to remind people that we're trying to think about a World Cup where teams go to that type of game a lot. So we've needed to be able to make sure we diffuse that. And we've actually got some good success out of that, we believe. And so we've got confident with that. Now now the, the chance to play Geordie at 12s, you know, is throwing up another option. And... We're always going to look at Geordie at some time this year at 12. He, that gives us a great coverage within our 23. But the fact that he's 
got a starting role and, and played so well is, of course, it's caused us to rethink things, and, and we will. And the fact that we've got the likes of Bodie and and Will and and you know, and also I'd, I'd chuck Stephen Perafita as a very experienced yeah, team point. too. So we've actually got some good options, and that's what we need. We need to keep growing the depth and versatility of our group. Two questions to go. Your favourite moment of the year, if there was one moment in those all-black test matches, what was it that you loved, apart from the French referee making that call? <laughs> um, which he got right, by the way. Yes, he did. Just... I believe it. I'm, I'm with it. And I will keep reminding you, he didn't win us the test. He gave us an opportunity to win the test. Right, so, and the players, see, so, that, that moment there, and Justin talked about this, Justin Marshall, the other day on the programme, he said that moment could be one of those moments that that group of players looks back on where they had to execute at that moment, and they did. Yep, that's right. And it's uh, great learning for us, you know, and we should never have been in that position. We all know that, 31-13, but we were, and at least we come out the other side. A couple of moments, oh, look, it's... I think it's it's hard to not enjoy Eden Park against Australia. We we're under a lot of pressure to play well, um, to give ourselves a chance of winning the championship. And and whilst, you know, funny old thing is that super level, everyone talks about the trophy you win at the end, whereas in the All Blacks, no one actually talks about the trophies. They just talk about you have to win every test. But mm-hmm. for us, putting ourselves into a position to, to win a championship where... We were considered down and out. I think is a show a lot of character in this group, and we know it's not perfect yet, and we know we're still growing and working. But to me, it just I, I felt really proud of the of the desire to work hard and give it everything and and play for the opportunity that, that game represented. So that's the highlight for me. After uh, Sir Steve retired, your dream job, after everything that's happened, COVID, the disrupted years, the uncertainty, the pay cuts that you had to take, the poor performances, the history and the history that was lost, <laughs> after all of it, after the viciousness of the backlash uh, on you, after all of that, if you knew of all of that three years ago, would you still have said, God damn, yes, I want this job? <laughs> yeah, that is a cruel question to ask. The, the, the answer is yes. It's, you do it for a reason. I, I love coaching. Um, and offer it, and and the rest is all noise. Finally, you you, you get the final say. Anything you want to say to all black fans at all? And I thank you so much for your time. You've been so generous. Twenty something minutes with us, mate, which is just fantastic for everyone that's listening. So, anything you want to say? Oh, I just thanks for hanging in there. And I know it's been a tough time, but we had so many texts from ex all blacks who said, "Well." We've been here before, and so this is not totally new. So let's just, just, but you guys have to be part of the solution. So I guess what I want to say that you know we're we're working hard to be part of the solution. We've got a a rugby world cup in mind, and really believe in the direction and and the people we've got. So um, nothing's really changed, even though it's been a rocky road where our eyes have fixed firmly on a prize. Appreciate it enormously. You've given us all this time. Thank you so much, mate. No worries, mate. Good hearing you. All right. Ian Foster with us, the All Black coach.